Hey everybody, Mr. Wolf here, and uh, this lesson is on using square roots to solve quadratic equations. Now we're skipping uh, uh, section 10.4 because they just want us to uh, estimate uh, your solutions by graphing, and, and uh, due to time constraints, we're just going to skip that because because nobody ever uses it, and it's just an approximate answer. So, so anyways, we're going to skip that lesson. So uh, solving the uh, uh, solve each equation. So 2x squared equals 18. Okay, we got to solve for x, so divide by 2. All right, and you get x squared equals 9. Okay, and then don't forget, you got to square root it and then plus or minus because the, uh, 3 and negative 3 squared, when I square 3, I get 9, but when I square negative 3, I also get 9, so that's why it's plus or minus 3 on this guy. Okay, so I had to get rid of the 2 first and then and then square root of both sides. So here, I have this one first. Okay, first uh, we got to add the 18 to both sides. Okay, and I get 36. So square root 36 is 6, but again, don't forget your plus or minus. All right. Uh, okay. Here I'm going to go ahead and add 12 to both sides and get 17. So this time it's uh, plus or minus the square root of 17. 17 is prime. So that's your answer right there. All right. Uh, let's see. So uh, m squared plus 11 equals 4. Going to subtract 11 on both sides and get uh, uh, negative 7. Now right here, you guys, I have a something squared equals negative 7. When I square a number, it's always going to be positive, except for 0. 0 squared is 0, but any other number squared is going to be positive. So when I see this, a squared being a negative number, that means no solution, you guys. So I can never get a square to equal a negative number. Now in Algebra 2, you're going to be talking about imaginary numbers, but we're talking about graphing and the solutions where it crosses the x-axis. Um, that's what all these are. Remember, these are just parabolas. They just, uh, uh, they're quadratics that graph parabolas and they cross the x-axis. <clears throat> So that one won't cross the x-axis. Okay, here got to divide both sides by by 25, and, uh, and then I'm going to square root both sides. Okay, so I get the square root of plus or minus. Don't forget your plus or minus. The square root of 36 is 6. The square root of 25 is 5. So it's going to be plus or minus 6 fifths. Okay, all right. Okay, this one I'm going to go ahead and add 11 to both sides, and then uh, I get 24, and then divide by 3 and I get 8 and then I square root don't forget your plus or minus and 8 uh, breaks down to 2 times 2 times 2 and 2 twos on the inside brings 1 2 on the outside so these 2 twos give me that one so it's plus or minus 2 root 2 alright isn't this fun I always tell my kids boy when you go home and your parents ask you how was math today you can tell them it was radical get it slap your knee <laughs> alright uh, okay so this one here uh, let's see I got to uh, uh, the best way to do this, you guys, is to divide by 3. Okay, that's easy enough. And then just like last time, when I had, say if it was x squared equals 12, then it would be x equals plus or minus the square root of 12, except it's x minus 7 because your square root in this side, you get just x minus 7, and it's plus or minus the square root of this side. Then simplify the square root of 12, which is 2 times 2 times 3. Okay, so two twos on the inside brings 1, 2 on the outside. All right, and then plus 7 to both sides. And then so there's my answer, 7, okay, so 7 plus or minus 2 root 3, okay, and they usually write it like that. They would not write it plus or minus 2 root 3 plus 7. It gets, gets kind of ugly that way. So just write it with this 7 plus or minus 2 root 3. And sometimes, you guys, your book, in fact, uh, my textbook doesn't write the plus or minus part. All the other textbooks I've taught out of did, but my new one doesn't. They write them separately. There's 7 plus 2 root 3. There's 7 minus 2 root 3, okay?